Hi, it's Chandler Hanspell. In this video, I want to talk about the band Field Music. Field music uh, consists of two brothers, David and Peter Brewis, and they're from Sunderland here in the UK. They're a fantastic band. When I first heard the album Common Time in 2016, it filled my heart with joy to know that there were musicians out there creating wonderful music. I know there are a lot of musicians out there creating wonderful music, but you don't always get to hear it. Listening to the album reminded me of some of the bands from the 1980s. It was almost, you know, I could hear influences from you know talking heads and xdc at least i assumed at the time when i was listening i had no background information about the band but i could hear these kind of influences in there and i assumed that these guys had listened to these bands and somehow integrated and incorporated it into their own music and uh, there was a funkiness to it as well and uh, the fact that they were from sunderland made it even more intriguing for me brilliant songs really clever uh, great arrangements great production and uh, in this video, I want to focus on one of my favorite tracks on the album, and that's It's a Good Thing. It's a Good Thing starts off with this really beautiful chord, the chord that he's playing is a G major 7 with a C in the bass which gives you like a C Lydian sound you know that that uh, major with a sharp 4 or a sharp 11 in this case um, which you know of course Lydian absolutely adore that sound drums come in, you have that classic synth bass sound in the background there. Actually, the song reminds me of all the notes, I Can't Go For That. Um, I think I read somewhere they, they were um, influenced by Holden Oates and you know, one of the great pop duos of the 1980s. Then it goes to an E major 9 chord. You've got the, uh, that D. Really strong guide tones between the two chords. And even in the melody, when he's singing the melody, he's decorating that, uh, th those guide tones. So while he's over the, the G major 7 over C, he's got that D that goes to the up to the E and then down to the major seven with the E major E major nine chord. Kind of swivels around the, the note there. Now these chords are great uh, to solo of. You know, if I was gonna play this as a, uh, a solo guitar piece, I would definitely be uh, taking advantage of those chord changes. Those chords form the basis for the verse. There's another chord in there, like an E minor type of chord, um, but the melody that accompanies them is just really, really special. Thank you. 
apart from the music, I love the ethos that kind of uh, uh, improvised solutions to problems within the music industry. Although in some ways they seem to sort of um, circumnavigate the industry, or at least all the kind of logistical problems that come with it and seem to be self-sufficient. They're more interested in making music that they want to make um, and are prepared to make sacrifices. And I really admire that. Apart from it's a good thing having a really good groove and great melody and chords, it has a wonderful string section in the outro of the piece. It's a really well written part and adds vibrance of colour to the piece at that point. So I transcribed the strings from the original recording and then I wrote them out. And as you can see, this is the result of my transcription. I've created a string quartet here. We have fourths in the violins and fourths between the viola and cello. They're just uh, doubling the fourth interval, but an octave below for the viola and cello. It then moves to a crotchet note triplet figure, where the melody at this point is in unison between all stringed instruments. Unison and octave melodies continue with a quaver note triplet followed by crotchets, an ascending melody that takes us into the chord change, a semi-quaver unison figure that descends slowly in the next few bars, taking us back into the G major 7 of the C chord. We have some simple counterpoint here with long notes held while the cello interjects with ascending notes. The strings are lush at this point. And when we get to the last five bars, there's an ascending melody in the violins while well, the viola stays on the D sharp, it swells, and then we end on this lovely D major 7 chord. It's a really simple but effective string section. You have the band fading out while the strings continue and we finish on that wonderful D major 7 chord. So the end is open, it seems almost unfinished, as if the D major 7 is implying the following E major 7 that would happen ordinarily after the G major 7 of the C chord. 